Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A major effort is underway to convince more Christian voters to help elect Kamala Harris as president. Part of the strategy involves reaching out to conservatives, but not everyone is buying it. CBN's chief political analyst, David Brody, has that story. Since Kamala Harris stepped in to become the Democrat nominee for president, she's enjoyed a wave of positive poll numbers and huge crowds at rallies. If she's to carry that momentum into the fall, however, tapping into the Christian vote could potentially take her to the White House. Colossians 2.8 Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. The Bible teaches us so much about what we must do to be dutiful. Understanding we have a duty to our God and to one another. Raised as a Baptist in San Francisco, Harris's faith is rooted in what is commonly known as the social justice gospel. This human rights approach centers more on Jesus' teaching of compassion for those less fortunate rather than a fundamentalist viewpoint. The quest to promote that message to Christian voters is well underway. Vice President Kamala Harris is a fellow Christian. The group Evangelicals for Harris hosted a Zoom call this month that drew tens of thousands. The founder, Reverend Jim Ball, the former head of a Christian environmental organization, says the group plans to reach beyond a progressive audience. We're trying to reach out to as many conservative folks as we can. You are? Yeah, we try to reach out to uh, uh, websites that are highly visited by Trump supporters, by so-called MAGA Republicans. You think there's an opportunity there? We do. The group's 200,000 members are focused mainly in swing states. They're planning to spend more than a million dollars on video ads targeting specific Christian households on places like YouTube, Hulu, Apple TV, Google, and Facebook. While taking on Trump could be a tall order, they believe there's an opening. Among his base of white evangelical Protestant voters, 37% see Trump as a great president, 37% say a good one. The window may be that 9% consider him average. 6% poor, 10% say terrible. Those three categories total 25% of conservative evangelicals who could potentially be difference makers. We saw that happen for Barack Obama in 2008 when he received 26% of this key group and won. And again in 2020, as Joe Biden received 24% and also won. In 2016, Hillary Clinton lost after receiving only 16% of conservative evangelical voters. If Kamala Harris can, let's just say, get over 20% or more, she's in business. We're hoping that we'll have an, his an historic amount uh, this time, so we'll see. Obama levels, maybe. Uh, yes, Obama levels, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping for that. And allies are joining with them, such as the group Faithful America, which bills itself as the largest online community of Christians. Black Church Pack is also active, holding a recent Zoom call that attracted 16,000 churchgoers and raised a half million dollars toward voter outreach. Then there's Christians for Kamala. Hello, everybody. Hello, my fellow Christians. Senator Cory Booker and CNN's Van Jones are some of the big names focusing on progressive Christians. I always say, before you tell me about your religion, first show it to me and how you treat other people. Her agenda is to stand for what Jesus called the least of these, um, the addicted, uh, the convicted, the afflicted, the evicted. The horror of abortion is precisely an attack on the least of these. The unborn baby is weak and defenseless and are the most vulnerable members of the human family. It's in the 25th chapter of Matthew that Christ foretells how he will come again in glory to judge all the nations and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep at his right hand, but the goats at the left. Christ says to those who are on his right, who feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, 
visit the sick, and go to the prisoner, that as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me, ushering them in to eternal life. Those who are on the left, who are unsympathetic to the least of these, are instead told, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. It's not enough to believe that Jesus is who he says he is if our actions don't match our words. Jesus proclaims this in Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Conservatives say evangelicals shouldn't fall for this worldview, which they believe is Christian socialism, leftist thought, identity politics, and Marxist-driven liberation theology all rolled into one. Biblical scholar Robert Gagnon calls evangelicals for Harris an oxymoron, indeed an insult to our intelligence. And the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission says, quote, Unfortunately, the positions that Harris has our track record of supporting and advocating for would lead to a devaluing of marriage, the deaths of the preborn, and a restricting of religious liberty for people of faith. And her opponent? Well, he's weighed in as well. How any Christian can vote for a Democrat, Christian or person of faith, person of faith, how you can vote for a Democrat is crazy. It's crazy. If folks are wondering how can, uh, you know, somebody uh, vote for one party or the other, I'd say, first of all, center it in Jesus' lordship, and then ask who was Jesus concerned about? And Jesus was concerned about the vulnerable. And which party is taking care of the vulnerable? Texas State Representative James Tallarico currently is in seminary and on board with evangelicals for Harris. You know, when I was a, a kid growing up here in Texas, I remember people wearing those bracelets with the letters WWJD, what would Jesus do? And I think that's the question we need to ask ourselves when we go into the voting booth this November. Conservative Christians often point out Harris's positions on abortion, marriage, and gender identity. Trump's campaign believes his traditional policies in those areas will resonate much more with evangelicals. Tallarico isn't so sure and wants to send a message. Donald Trump is taking your vote for granted. He thinks he's got it in the bag. And honestly, I think Donald Trump does not represent Christian values. That's why this effort is focused squarely on love thy neighbor when it comes to the agenda ahead. The evil we are seeing today isn't Republican versus Democrat, right versus left. It's good versus evil. There are only two groups of people in this world, the saved and the unsaved. Here's a question everyone needs to answer. Whether you are a Democrat, Republican, or not affiliated with either party, do you love Jesus? Many professing Christians say they love Jesus, but in all actuality, they hate him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many who profess to be Christ followers are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and pro-transgender. They are defiant to the laws of God, as we read in 1 John 3, 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. How then can these people claim they love Jesus when he said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Jesus declares, They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, as we read in Matthew 15, 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For those who say Jesus never said anything about abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism being a sin. The Bible tells us all scripture is inspired by God as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable 
for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture has plenty of negative things to say about killing the innocent and homosexuality. It's called lawlessness. Many professing Christians justify sin by using Christ's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself means telling them the truth in love, not by condoning their sin. The good news is, God will forgive all sin, as we read in 1 John 1 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 10 14 and 15. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. Well, the old saying goes that religion and politics don't mix. That's not necessarily the case in Chicago, as thousands of people descended on the Windy City for the Democratic National Convention last week. A local ministry took the opportunity to make an impact beyond what goes beyond politics. We needed a leader who was steady and brought people together. While speeches and applause took place inside Chicago's United Center, chaos often erupted outside. Our God is an awesome God. In the midst of it all, a group of Chicago street ministers boldly shared the gospel just outside the security perimeter. We went on a day where there were feminists, communists. Juan Elias Riesco leads Chicago for Jesus, a multi-denominational team supported by the city's Metro Praise International Church. When we were there, we were communicating with the communist revolutionaries of America. And we had a great 10, 15 minute conversation. We talked about Jesus. We explained to them that the Bible is way more sufficient than you know, any communist manifesto. I had the privilege of ministering the gospel to a trans person. I looked at her and I said, did you know that you were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God? That God did not design you to be trans, but he made you perfectly as you are. Jesus Christ is the only way to truth of life. Their encounters often impactful and occasionally shocking. I want to kill my baby. And see the problem with a lot of I want to here. kill my baby. So we know things can take a turn for the worst at any time, but brother, we believe that God has called us to go to these places. Jesus is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Chicago for Jesus remained focused in those places, even when accosted by an anti-Israel demonstrator. So the same guy who was inflicting you know, um, persecution upon us, putting his speakers in our face, getting in our face. We found his phone and we gave it back to him. And he looked at us and said, wow, man, that really just changed my perspective on you guys. And we got to minister to him after that. Last week, it was ministry at the DNC. This week, it could be in front of a Chicago abortion clinic or at a local music festival. Riesco says every place is fair game to do what their name demands, reach Chicago for Jesus. We know that the truth of the gospel is the only thing that can slice through these lies and save these the souls of these people. There is nothing more essential to the world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, Paul declares what the gospel is and how important it is to embrace it and share it with others. He reminds the Corinthians of the gospel he preached among them, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, that Christ is coming back for his church someday in the rapture according to the scriptures, as we read in 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 55. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, 
Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Jesus promised his followers he was going to go and prepare a place for them in his Father's house, where there are many mansions, as we read in John 14, 1-3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is the essence of the gospel, the pure gospel of Jesus Christ, his death on the cross for sinners, his resurrection to everlasting life, and his coming back someday is central to our Christian faith. 1 Corinthians 1.18 For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is $Watchman1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. We begin in the Middle East where Iran is still promising to take revenge on Israel after the death of a top Hamas leader in Tehran. That threat comes as Hezbollah remains position, positioned to attack the northern region of the Jewish state. Hezbollah's entrenched position in southern Lebanon presents an ongoing strategic challenge along Israel's northern border. The IDF reports daily rocket and drone incursions and continues striking Hezbollah positions overnight. We're very determined to continue degrading Hezbollah eliminating more commanders and denying them assets and capabilities. We're not stopping. Iran continues to threaten retaliatory action following the July 30th neutralization of Hamas' top political leader in Tehran. Retaliation for this crime, whether by the axis of resistance or by Iran, is certain. As the region seems to have stepped back from the brink of a wider war, the Biden administration is continuing to push a Gaza ceasefire despite Hamas' rejection of the current plan. So the working groups are now meeting and, and talking, and so uh, there continues to be progress. And um, our team on the ground continues to describe the talks as constructive. Israel believes neutralizing top Hamas leader Yahya Sinwar could accelerate ceasefire negotiations. IDF troops reportedly have come within minutes of finding him, but Sinwar's evasion tactics reportedly include communication blackouts and wearing a burqa, leading some Israelis to give him the moniker Mrs. Dodgefire. As the conflict enters its 11th month, Iran has issued a warning to all airlines to exercise caution when flying over specific areas of its airspace starting September 1st without specifying an end date increasing concerns about another retaliatory attack sometime soon. The Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17, 1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Russian forces launched the largest air assault of the war against Ukraine overnight, targeting the country's power grid and water plants. At one point, the entire country was under an air raid alert, and all residents were told to take shelter. Russia unleashed a day of terror across Ukraine. 
Residents of Kyiv hunkered down in the city's subway as more than 200 drones and missiles targeted critical civilian infrastructure, according to President Volodymyr Zelensky. It was one of the heaviest strikes, a combined one, he says. Russia's main target was Ukraine's power grid. One missile missed, but another hit a dam providing electricity to Kyiv. Its destruction would flood the capital, putting millions at risk. And there are now reports of widespread power outages. The barrage also destroyed homes like Ihor's. There's nothing left, he says. It was razed to the ground. The attack is seen as retaliation for Ukraine's offensive in Russia's Kursk region. As far as Russia from here. Last week, CBS News visited near the border. We saw vital supplies flowing into Russia to support the incursion. Ukraine's top general says his forces advanced about two more miles while seizing two more villages. But in eastern Ukraine, Russian forces grind forward. Yesterday, the Reuters news agency announced one of their safety advisors was killed and two journalists injured when a missile hit their hotel in the city of Kramatorsk. But Russia's main focus is on the strategic town of Pokrovsk. Kiev says it's reinforcing that front to deny Moscow the prize. Romans 8, 21 and 22. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Romans 8, 21 and 22 tells us creation longs for the day when the salvation that has already begun in God's children will be completed. Tonight, a quarter of the country is dealing with dangerous weather with more storms on the way. A disaster was declared in Alaska today with residents forced to evacuate after a landslide destroyed homes about 300 miles south of the capital of Juneau. And in Hawaii, more than a foot of rain from Hurricane Hone washed out roads with another major storm approaching. While tens of millions of people across the Midwest are under heat alerts with record-breaking and dangerously high temperatures expected to last four days. A devastating and deadly landslide in the picturesque Alaskan village of Ketchikan, triggered by heavy rain. It uh, crossed over about three different roads in the community and took out several homes, including pushing some homes into other homes. Mayor Rodney Dial says one person died and three were injured as the wall of mud and debris ripped through neighborhoods. The slide occurred late Sunday afternoon, and tonight concern is growing. Another one could be imminent. What are the odds of that potentially happening based on what you're seeing? We're concerned that the ground has been weakened in that area and it has significantly increased the chances that we could get an additional slide. Some lifelong residents in Ketchikan say this is unprecedented. The mountains have always held in a community that often receives more than 12 feet of rain a year. This is one of the rainiest spots on earth. So for us to have an actual landslide is just it's, it's very, very rare. Meanwhile, in Arizona, a monsoon sparked flash flooding in Grand Canyon National Park. More than 100 people, many of them hikers, were trapped near Havasupe Falls. The National Guard deployed a Black Hawk chopper to rescue the stranded. One hiker, 33-year-old Chinoa Nickerson, was swept away. Her body was found in the raging Colorado River. And in Hawaii, tropical storm Hone has moved on, but left behind torrential rainfall and flooding. Parts of Hawaii have seen their third wettest day in the past 75 years. Thousands lost power. And all these storms share one thing in common. Scientists say climate change is making them more extreme. Meanwhile, back in Hawaii, the islands there bracing for impact from another storm system heading its way later this week. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, 
Look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised Him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with Him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what? Appearance occurs on a Sunday morning. My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready! Get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.